Okay. Uh, Manfred is the next on the stage. He is coming from Austria. By the way, I'm usually coming from Austria as well. Um, happy to have him here, and he will talk about progressive web apps with uh, Angular 2. Please welcome Manfred. Well, thank you, Johannes. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my talk. Perhaps I can get a picture. Yes, we have a picture now. Perfect. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Manfred Steyer, and I will talk about progressive web apps in the next, uh, let's say, 30 minutes. So who I am? I am a trainer and a consultant, and I live in Austria, and I also work in Germany. And from time to time, I'm writing my last book has been about AngularJS. What are the contents of this talk? First of all, I want to speak about uh, what are progressive web apps in general and what is the motivation for progressive web apps. And then I will talk about offline scenarios with service worker. In addition to that, I will show how to provide immediately value to the user. And then we will talk about background synchronizations and push notifications. In addition to that, I will talk a bit about the new Angular Mobile Toolkit, which makes creating progressive web apps with Angular 2 very, very easy. So let's start with the overview. When we look at web apps nowadays, we see several advantages. For instance, we need no installation for web apps, and they are ready for every platform. They run on every platform. And the deployment is very easy. We just have to copy all the files to some web server. In addition to that, updating those web applications is very easy too. And they are searchable, and you can link to it, or you can create a bookmark that points directly to the application or to some state within the application. So the web platform is quite amazing. But there is also another platform, the platform for native apps. And native apps provide different advantages. For instance, they are very easy to launch. You just touch or click on some icon at the home screen, and then the native application comes up. And they immediately provide value. You can launch them very quickly, and then they are showing up some meaningful informations for you. And they also work offline, and when there are slow, slow connections, uh, slow internet connections, like inside here. And in addition to that, they provide for push notifications, as well as for device access. And progressive web apps try to combine the both the best of both worlds. They try to combine the best of native apps and the best of web apps. And they achieve that by uh, using progressive enhancements. Progressive enhancements that allows for offline scenarios, for caching, or for uh, installation to the home screen. One important thing about progressive enhancements is that your application must work without them. They have uh, to provide the core of its functionality without a support for those progressive enhancements, without a support for those features uh, by your browsers. A good metaphor for this is this good old uh, heavyweight monitor. This good old heavyweight monitor uh, just works with every PC out there. It isn't as convenient as a new flat uh, monitor, but it just works. And this is how your progressive web apps should work. They should just work with some older browser, but when you have a newer browser, it should provide some additional features, some additional convenience. Another great metaphor uses M&Ms. Who knows M&Ms? 
Okay, almost everything. Uh, I have, to be honest, yesterday I've discovered that there was a pack of M&Ms in my minibar, and after that they don't lift long. And I can really recommend the yellow M&Ms, uh, the M&Ms with peanuts. Just uh, eat some of them after a stressful day and everything is okay. And when you look inside such an M&M, then you are seeing several layers. You are seeing a nut, you are seeing a chocolate layer, and then you are seeing the sugar candy. And when you compare this M&M to your progressive web app, then the nut is the content that your application provides. And the content is the thing that is most important about your application. In addition to that, the chocolate layer can be compared to the layout. The layout is also important. And the sugar candy is where all the scripting and the progressive enhancements live. So uh, there are different kinds of sugar candies. There are different flavors. There are blue ones, yellow ones, green ones, and so on. And your application should work with all those flavors, with all the, as mentioned before, browsers that are out there. And your application should use the features of these browsers to enhance the user experience. So the question is now how to implement such progressive enhancements. And to answer this question, I've prepared a demonstration. I've prepared a case study. Uh, this case study consists of a very simple application. This application uses Angular Material, Angular Material and uh, it is about uh, flight bookings. It displays bookings for flights you have created. And this case study uh, allows for offline capabilities, it allows for push notifications, it allows for background synchronization, it also allows for an installation to the home screen of your mobile device, and it allows for gaining immediate value. You can start it and get immediate value. You don't need to wait uh, for something that has to be downloaded. So let's have a look at this sample application. Here we go. Here I have my uh, flights. You see I'm uh, very interested in the German city Hamburg. And uh, this also shows that I'm living in Austria and in Graz. And with this application, I can just check in or check out from my flights. So here I'm just checking out from my flights. And that seems to work quite nicely. So let's do something uh, exciting. Let's just exit the web server. Let's just uh, turn down the web server. And in addition to that, let's close the internet connection. Oh, it has been closed. So we seen it just works without internet connection. Oh, no. <laughs> that was the intent, so let me just start over. So perhaps there is a caching problem. Let's restart the application to ensure that everything gets cached. And let's exit the web server. And then we are reloading it. Oh, yeah. For some reason, I have a really problem here when it comes to this demo. So this is expected to work here. Uh, when I've prepared for this, I got really offline support. So for some reason, I've broke this. Let's give it one more try. Uh, when it won't work, we have just to imagine that it works. <laughs> So, here we go, we are starting the live server. So perhaps we should restart the browser. We should get some caching behavior. Okay. Let's exit the server. And here we go, yes. Whew. Uh, that was amazing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. 
So we see that everything works also offline. There is some caching mechanism here. In addition to that, I can also alter the state of my flights when I'm offline. And for this, I'm just saying that I want to check in to my flights. And when I'm online again, then this application begins to synchronize. It is just triggering some uh, method. It is just triggering some background uh, process to sync up the local data with the data that is available online. So when we look into our uh, console, then we are seeing here that the background synchronization has just performed. So the browser detected that he that it is online and it synced up. Okay, great. So let's look at how we can implement such a demonstration. First of all, we need service workers. We need service workers to go offline. And so we have to clarify what service workers are. Service workers are just some background tasks. They run in the background and they are installed by a web app. And they can also run without the web app. Web app. Uh, the browser don't need to load the web app for the service worker to get running. And the service worker itself can decide to go idle or it can reactivate uh, itself. In addition to that, the service worker needs HTTP. It only works when you have an HTTP connection. Uh, there is one exception to this rule. When you are using localhost, then you can just go with HTTP. In all other cases, you need HTTPS. And service workers don't allow for the X, uh, XHR object. You have to go with the new fetch API within service workers. So, how do service worker provide for offline capabilities? Service worker can intercept every request the browser is executing. And then the service worker can decide how to respond to the request in question. For instance, it can implement some caching patterns, some caching patterns like cache only. That means that uh, the service worker is trying to answer the request with something that is located within the browser cache. In addition to that, there are caching patterns like network only, which means that the service worker can decide to go online for specific requests. There are other advanced caching scenarios like cache first, then network, or like network first and then cache means when something isn't found online, when there isn't an online connection, that the service worker just uses the cache. So, what do we need to get started with service workers? Of course, you can use the native API that our browsers are presenting to us. But in general, I think it isn't a good idea to use native browser APIs. It isn't a good idea to directly program against the DOM. It isn't a good idea to directly program against something like IndexedDB. And if you ask me, it isn't a good idea to directly program against the service worker API. Instead of this, I would really recommend the service worker toolbox. It's just an abstraction for the service worker that has been written at Google. And this abstraction allows very easy access to the possibilities of the service workers. To register a service worker script, you just need this script tag here. The script tag is referencing some part of the toolbox, and then it is also referencing your service worker script with this um, additional uh, attribute. And when the browser reads this, then it starts to download the service worker and it starts to install the service worker in the background. Some seconds after this, the service worker will run 
And here we see the implementation for a very simple service worker, a service worker that is used for caching. First of all, I'm importing the service worker toolbox, and then I'm telling the toolbox that the service worker shall cache some files. The files to cache are mentioned by this array here, by this array cache files. Of course, you can write this array by hand, but that isn't exactly a good idea. It would be a good idea to generate this array so that you don't forget about specific files you need when you are offline. And it turns out that there are some nice uh, tools at Google that helps by generating these arrays. In addition to that, I'm setting up two routes. These routes look like routes we know from something like Express. And the first route is addressing everything from the origin Angular AT. Angular AT is the domain where I'm running my web API. So all the flight bookings are coming from this uh, domain. And here I'm saying that I just want a network only access to this domain. I don't want that the JSON result that has been fetched from this domain uh, should be cached within the browser cache. And for our other, uh, or other domains or for our other routes, I'm just using the strategy cache first, means that the service worker first looks into the cache, and when there is nothing, then it tries to fetch the resource online, and then the resource is cached. So, as you see here, it is very easy to get started with service workers, especially when you are using the toolbox. Let's talk about browser support. When we look at browser support nowadays, then we see that there are some browsers that are allowing for service workers. For instance, Firefox or Chrome allows for it, or uh, also Opera. Edge doesn't allow for it now, and uh, neither does Safari. When it comes to Edge, then Microsoft says that service workers are under development. That is a good statement. So we can expect service worker support in the next month, I would uh, guess. When it comes to Safari, we have a very political statement. The guys at uh, Apple mentioned that service worker support is under consideration. I really hope that they will implement it, because where I come from, under consideration means I don't even think about it, fuck off or something else. <laughs> so let's hope that they are really uh, plan to implement this. But there are some fallbacks for Safari and other browsers. There are some technologies there that are around for some years and that are working. For instance, there is the app cache, a mechanism that has been introduced with HTML5. And this app cache also allows for caching data for offline access. And uh, the downside of it is it uh, provides less features. You don't have that much caching patterns. You just have something like cache only or network only. You can't implement something like first cache, then network, or first network, then cache, or some other nice features that uh, are provided from caching patterns. So that is the downside, but in the sense of progressive extensions, we can use these tools nowadays to provide the best experience that is available for the device and for the browser the user is using. So let's talk about storing data locally. When it comes to storing data locally, we have some browser databases available today. For instance, there is the local storage that allows for storing uh, some amount of key value pairs. There is the WebDB and SQL database that uh, has been deprecated, but it is here. Some browsers implemented it. For instance, Safari implemented it. Also, uh, Firefox has an implementation for it. And there is the IndexedDB. Uh, very nice NoSQL solution with a very unhandy interface. 
because there are several possibilities, several uh, browser databases, and because the IndexedDB has a very unhandy interface, I would recommend to use some abstraction. As mentioned before, it is seldom a good idea to directly access the browser features. And such an abstraction is PouchDB. I'm using PouchDB within my sample I'm publishing after this talk. Uh, PouchDB is a very simple document-oriented database with a uh, nice API to store and retrieve data. In in addition to that, you also have to take care about the quotas. Every browser has different quotas for those uh, browser databases. And so your application should be prepared for, uh, the, um, for, uh, for, reaching, the, for reaching the quota limit. Uh, your application must deal with it. Your application uh, does not uh, have to uh, crash, but your application has to provide some information to the user when the browser tells that the quota have been exceeded. So progressive web apps are also about providing value in an immediate way. That means that the user don't uh, should have to wait for the application to come up. The user don't should have to wait for the application to show meaningful information. Just think about your Facebook or Twitter application. You can start your Facebook or Twitter application and it immediately shows some meaningful data, the last messages that have been retrieved. And after some seconds, it also shows data that have been downloaded from the server. And the same should be implemented within progressive web apps. And for this, you can use something like the application shell pattern. The application shell pattern consists of a shell that can be loaded immediately and that is heavily cached. And for this, you're using service workers. And in addition to that, the application shell is using some data that is also cached. So this data can also be displayed immediately. And sometimes after the application shell has loaded, the application shell can update itself with some online data. So first of all, it presents some cache data immediately, and then it comes up with the newly fresh fetched data. When we look at the sample here, then we are seeing the app shell uh, that is just the border of our application, the border with some menu items. And this app shell uses the content within here, and this is the content that has been retrieved from the PouchDB, the content that is cached. So we can also install progressive web apps to the home screen of our mobile devices. And for this, we need something like the web application manifest. Here we see an example for a web application manifest. As you see, uh, it is just some piece of JSON. And this JSON tells the mobile device how to display the web application at the home screen. For instance, here we have the official name of this application, and here we have the short name that is displayed below the home screen button. In addition to that, we can also um, define some icons that should be displayed, and we can also state that the application should be launched in standalone mode. Standalone mode means that the address bar is hided. So your browser application just looks like an ordinary application when you are launching it from the home screen. Of course, you have to reference your manifest from your website, and for this you are using meta tags. Here I have a meta tag that is called manifest, and it points to my JSON file. The downside of the manifest is that it isn't supported by all browsers out there. Uh, just guess which browser isn't supporting the manifest. Uh, one of those browsers is Safari. But 
Also there, there is a meaningful fallback for this case. You can just use some meta tags that Safari provides to achieve the same. So with this meta tags, you can also uh, create an application that can be installed to the home screen, an application that can be launched in standalone mode without an address bar. So let's talk about some further possibilities of progressive web applications. As mentioned before, progressive web applications allows for background synchronizations. And when you want to use this, then your application just requests the background synchronization. And then the service worker triggers some event within the uh, service worker, it triggers some event when it is appropriate and the browser decides the point when it is appropriate to sync your data. For instance, the browser can draw something like the network status or the battery status into consideration when it comes to decide when to synchronize your data. So perhaps when you have a bad network connection, perhaps when the battery status is very low, then the browser decides for postponing the background synchronization, and that means that it is triggering this event afterwards. There are also plans for periodic background synchronizations, background synchronizations that, for instance, are triggered every five minutes. This hasn't been implemented so far, but as mentioned, there are plans for it. In addition to that, modern uh, progressive web apps allow for push notifications. And uh, when it comes to push notifications, the scenario is a bit more complex. When it comes to push notification, you have three bodies. There is the browser, there is some web API that wants to notify the browser application, and in addition to that, there is some push service, some push service that is, for instance, provided by Google or by the guys over there at Firefox and so on. When you want to use push, first of all, your browser application has to register at the push service. Uh, for this, there is a simple uh, method within the service worker API. And after that, your browser application gets some ID, and this ID can then be sent over to the web API. And when the web API wants to notify your browser later, it just has to send a message to the push service. It uh, has to mention the received regi registration API, and then the push service is notifying the browser. By doing so, it is just triggering some event handler within the service worker, and then the event handler can decide what to do. For instance, the service worker can decide to update the cache, or it can decide to fetch some new data online, or it can just decide to display an information outside of the browser. So this is very cool, because this means the browser don't have to have the focus to uh, display a push notification. There could also be the lock screen activated, and the browser would also have the possibility to launch the push notification. So let's have a look of, at this. Here I'm don't using um, a web API. Instead of this, I'm simulating the push notification, so when I press this button here within the F5 developer tools, then the browser simulates, simulates the uh, recept of a push message. And as we are seeing here, I am out of luck today. Ay, ay, ay. So everything worked nicely before. And now for some reason it is really crashing. So Let's give it one more try. Okay, we are down. So let's reconnect to the internet. Let's do it with tethering because the network isn't quite good in here. I'm starting data roaming. I'm starting my personal hotspot. Activate Wi-Fi. 
So where is my personal hotspot? Here it is. Don't hack me. So, okay. Then I will restart my server here. Just make sure that everything is cached and then I will go inside here and simulate my push notification, resources, service workers, and publish. Okay, seems like we are out of luck today. Um, yeah, I can just come up with the good old programmer exercise. Uh, when I tested it, then it worked. So perhaps you can load it down afterwards and then it should work, hopefully. So, okay, let's go on. We can register for Bush and then hopefully the browser is displaying some Bush notification. So let's come to a last topic. Let's talk about the Angular Mobile Toolkit. The Angular Mobile Toolkit comes with some features that helps to uh, write mobile applications, uh, especially progressive web apps that are running mobile. And for this, the mobile toolkit is using the Angular CLI. You can use this combination to just scaffold and progressive web app. And that helps, of course, to get started. This scaffolding mechanism generates the web application manifest for you, and it also generates the app shell for you. So nearly everything we have seen within this demonstration can be generated with this mobile toolkit and with this uh, uh, extension. And when it comes to the app shell, this tool uses Angular Universal. And now you might be wondering what Angular Universal Angular Universal has been created for the server side. Yes, the primary use case is for server side rendering, but you can also use it on client side. You can also use it during your uh, development workflow. And the mobile toolkit uses it to pre render the application shell. So you have a pre-rendered version of your application shell, a pre-rendered version that can be displayed immedi immediately without some kind of browser rendering. So that really speeds up the start of your application. And in addition to that, uh, the mobile toolkit is also creating a service worker that is using caching. And uh, this caching mechanism has also a fallback for Safari and other uh, browsers that don't allow for service workers. And <laughs> for this, this implementation is just using the good old application cache. So there is many goodness just generated with some commands. To get started, you need, of course, the Angular CLI. And then you are creating a new application with the Angular CLI. And you have to add the um, option slash slash mobile here. And then you get your first mobile application generated. And if you are interested into this, you can find a very nice guide at this URL. This guide guides you through all the steps you need to generate all this stuff like the application shell and so on. So let me sum up what we've seen here. We have seen that progressive web apps are about combining the best of both worlds. It's about combining the best of web apps as well as the best of native apps. It is also about progressive enhancements. That means that your application should work with nearly every browser, but when the browser provides some enhancements, it should use those enhancements to make the user experience better. Progressive web apps can work offline, uh, as we've seen in this demonstration, and uh, they can also use browser databases like the IndexedDB or like uh, the WebDB and so on. We have seen that these progressive web apps are using background synchronization, and they can also uh, take use of Bush. 
and there is this Angular mobile tool kit that helps to get started with Angular and progressive app apps. And then there is one further very important topic uh, I have showed you. I've showed that M&Ms can solve nearly all problems when you have a hard day. So, so much for this talk. Thanks for coming. Here you have my contact data. So uh, when you want to find my sample or my slides, just go to my blog. I will um, publish it today in the evening. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you very much.